Good evening and welcome to K4CO Radio. Uh, unless you were already listening, and uh, it's not really welcome, just welcome to us. Uh, I am Josh and we are sitting here um, with Molly and uh, she actually does all the original music to uh, the play Blood Wedding that is being done by... Um, uh, Community College of Denver Studio Theater, and that is actually at the King Center. Tonight is going to be their last uh, performance until um, the 15th. They actually go on the 15th through the 18th. And um, Molly Zachary, how are you today? I'm doing good, thanks. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, uh, Lorca's Blood Wedding. First, before we get into that, how long have you been doing uh, music for any plays or uh, here in Colorado? This is actually my first score for a play. Excellent. It's my first time doing that. Uh, I've been writing music for for a while. I've been kicking it in Denver for a long time. So I've been here since the 90s. Since the 90s. Since the 90s, hanging out. I used to make a zine and hand it out at punk shows. Really? <laughs> yeah. It I... used to be at Wax Tracks. Oh, I remember Wax Tracks. Yes. Oh, yeah. And Are they, they still were... around? They're still around. They have oh. a new location. Now I'm plugging them. They have a brand new location. I think it's in Inglewood. Really? Yeah, I'm. Ex- it's on South Broadway. Oh man, that I'm really just stop by. brings me back. I gotta yeah. stop by. Yeah. that is awesome. <laughs> um, so Lorca's Blood Wedding. Um, I did a little bit of reading about it, and um, it's a very interesting plot. And uh, especially since you came in, you kind of even uh, told me more information that I did not know. Uh, where it's not just regular, I guess, people. Uh, in the play. Um, let, what is um, Blood Wedding about? Yeah, it's a very strange play, and it was written in the 1930s, and Lorca was Spanish, living in Spain just before the Spanish Civil War exploded. Um, and so the government was, you know, becoming very repressive, and the play kind of reflects a little bit of that social anguish and turmoil that was happening in the country at that time. Uh, so we're obviously doing a an English translation of it. And so it's really more of an adaptation. And the director, Landon Melendez of Community College of Denver, has done a really beautiful job of adapting it. So she's even kind of rewritten the ending and some other elements like that. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just completely rewriting that. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of taking the bare bones of it. But Really, the core of the story is, I think, something that is relatable even to modern audiences, which is, you know, two young people who are sort of socially pressured into a marriage, but it's maybe not really the marriage that they want or that is really about true love or even cooperation and the things you know, marriage should be about. And so they're like getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the wedding day. And there's dread and tension all around. And you, you were saying something about there's um, mystical characters in it Mm -hmm. uh, as well. Uh, Tell us more about that. Yeah. That's how it reminds me a little bit of like Greek tragedies where there's these, you know, uh, non-human characters, these sort of larger-than-life mystical characters that want to meddle in mortals' (laughs) outcomes. So there is a moon, and the moon is the singing character. So I've written a number of songs for the moon. And the moon comes out on stage and kind of hovers over the actors, and she wants to kind of manipulate the situation. And she has her own ideas of what should or should not happen with this wedding as all of those uh you know like uh, non-mortals did in those plays yes. right exactly yes. <laughs> there's there's also a weaver who is kind of arachnid like but appears human she's very mystical and uh meddling and you aren't sure really what her motivations are or what her angle is what she's getting out of it but She's got her fingers in the pot, too. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's gotcha. really fun. Nice. When, when did you uh, start working on this? Uh, I started 
thinking about the music over the summer, but I really got down to brass tacks about September. About September, okay. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Excellent. Um, well, we did uh, pick some songs, you know, uh, uh, for those of us that are listening to uh, the first interview with K4CO, we like to pick some songs and have the person we're interviewing pick some songs as well. And we're going to have some clips of Lorca's Blood Wedding as well that you brought in, too. So um, I'm going to leave this first one up to you okay. on it. Um, would you like to start with one of your clips from the play or a song that you chose beforehand? Uh, let's, let's start with one of the clips from the play because we just talked about the moon and... Uh, I gave the moon a very big song. I thought, you know, in musicals and operas, like the character will usually have like one really big song. So this is her big song. And it's where she is directly addressing the bride. And she says, awake, bride, awake. And you can read into that several meanings. You know, maybe it's literally wake up from your dream, but it's also wake up and look at the world from a bigger view you know, stand outside of your life and see other possibilities for yourself. So she's kind of calling to the bride. And so the lyrics here are very esoteric, but they're really the moon trying to influence the bride to maybe not get married, to maybe rethink walking down the aisle. So in a positive light, in a negative light, or is that you're going to keep that for the Well, the title of the play is Blood Wedding. So that's some good foreshadowing. I would say that the entirety of the play is very gothic, very dark. Um, And I am intending for the music to kind of reflect that too, but not in like a we're trapped in sorrow. I think the moon has hope and the bride has hope too. They just can't see maybe they can't see their way out of the entrapment that maybe they're all in mutually. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. And then the moon stepping in, trying to help them out. Yes. Um, helping, or... Maybe helping herself out. Gotcha. Fair <laughs> and enough. So, So this clip is, uh, I actually was able to perform the song at CCD a few weeks ago at the faculty recital. And this is just the opening portion of it, but it presents the moon's musical theme. So throughout the play, there's a certain melodic idea that the moon kind of comes back in with. You know, you can, like in movies, you know, Darth Vader has a theme or Harry Potter has a theme. So this is a similar idea that the moon has a musical theme that she gets to revisit throughout the play as her character evolves. That's funny, too, how you bring up a couple others. I I remember seeing this clip of Harrison Ford going on stage and they were playing the Star Wars music. And he got up there. He's just like, every damn time I hate that song and (laughs) everything. But uh, it was pretty funny. So this is a a Wake Bride opening. There's a little clip of it. And we will be right back with Molly Zachary. Thank you. 
So that was a little snippet of um, Blood Wedding. Uh, that was uh, a wake bride opening. And uh, so you're saying you were singing in that version, but yes. in the play, it's the actress who is playing the moon. Yes, correct. Gotcha. Okay. Correct. And um, you were able to sing that when you were presenting your music for this play? Yeah, I'm also part of the faculty at Community College of Denver, so I'm teaching music classes. And every semester, the music faculty do a faculty recital where we all kind of perform songs. So I was able to perform the song there. Very yeah. nice. Excellent. Yeah. Um, when it comes to recording uh, all of this, do you record this at home where it's nice and relaxed uh do you use ccd studios and not only that was anybody else involved or was this all you just kind of sitting down and putting it all together it, for this project this was all me <laughs> at my home uh i have a i have a strong passion for synthesizers and synthesizer music. I really love messing around with synthesizers. So um, at home, I have my collection of digital instruments and I have the software and stuff to mix it and program it, lay it all out, mm -hmm. make all the little ear candy pop out where I want it to pop out. So that's how this score happened. Sometimes I do work with bands and instruments i've i've played with lots and lots of bands in town guitar drums bass all that stuff but for this project it was i thought that it suited the score for the play to have you know uh digital sounds that maybe are difficult to place difficult to identify right and that that's kind of what i got when i was listening to this beforehand very kind of very score like um, and electronic score like stuff. How long have you been teaching at CCD? Actually, I've only been there a year. Oh, so wow. I'm new there. You're uh, the newbie. I'm the newbie at CCD, but I, I have felt very welcomed there so far. And it's been really fun to work over there. For a long time, I taught at Swallow Hill Music here in mm -hmm. Colorado, which is a really excellent music school as well. And you say you've been here since the 90s. Where are you from? Originally, I'm from Kansas. Kansas. Very nice. Now, how old were you when you came out here in Colorado? 16. 16. Okay. We'll give you a native status. That, that <laughs> works. <laughs> that works. Excellent. How was it uh, working with, or how is it, because you're still working with the singers and the actors and everything. How is that um, enjoyment-wise? I mean, is it challenging? Does it have its challenges? Uh, especially putting on this play, and you just said uh, to me on the break that you're not done for another week, or uh, at least. Yeah, I still so, have a lot. I still lot have a lot on more to do. Um, yeah, it was a really, really fun and interesting experience. I had been really into theater when I was younger, all through high school. I was like doing theater. I thought I might be a theater person, but I kind of ended up going a different route. Um, and so this project really got to bring some of that back because instead of just thinking like, oh, I want to write a song and put out an album or I want to work with this band and they wrote this music and I'm going to put some lyrics with it, which is something that I've done a lot. It was, oh, there's already a character and I have to really depict their story. And then working with the actors in real time, like I was teaching them the music, like the day after I had written it, I was like, okay, I figured it out yesterday. Let's meet tomorrow. Oh, you know? wow. Like, <laughs> right. Um, and the actors were really wonderful. Uh, the actress who's playing the moon in particular, her name is Elizabeth. She had all this wonderful insight about the moon. And so all the music that I hadn't yet written, I was like, oh, this is how she's thinking about the moon. I'm going to put all of that into the music. So it felt really collaborative to be doing all the composing basically in real time as the actors were working on the production and learning their parts. Oh, I bet. Really I bet. Cool. And I definitely want to get a little bit more into that part of it, the writing part of it. We are going to take another quick break here. And you chose Aretha Franklin, uh, Daydreaming. Yes. And any particular reason? You know, I, 
I love all of Aretha Franklin's catalog, so it is always difficult to choose just one of her songs. But Daydreaming is really ethereal and spatial, and it feels a little bit like an outlier from her catalog, um, which isn't to say that it doesn't have a lot of soul and a lot of pulse and a lot of groove to it. But you'll hear kind of in the opening, it's like so free and so open. And that's how I like to sing. And that's how I like to write music. So I I thought it was a good piggyback on Awake, Bright Awake. I love it. Absolutely love it. We will be right back with Molly. Here's Aretha Franklin with Daydream. You are listening to Colorado's K4CO Radio. All right, Aretha Franklin, daydreaming. We are here sitting with Molly Zachary with Lorca's Blood Wedding, who did all of the original music to that. Great pick with Aretha, by the way. Um, So I've always thought about this. It's always fascinated me. You had the play. It was already written by Landon, correct? Well, it was already adapted by Landon. Or adapted, yeah. And it's... It's been adapted. This is where I think it's a little similar maybe to like, you know, older Greek plays or even Shakespeare to some extent, how things get sort of like readapted often. So Blood Wedding has been adapted by many people. And a lot of the parts that are designated as singing parts in the script were done by an Irish playwright in her adaptation in, I think, 2019. So Landon combined like, This other adaptation that was done in 2019 and Lorca and her own kind of ideas of where she thought the story should go. And just kind of mixed them all together. And kind of mashed them all together. So there were parts from the get-go that Landon was like, I want this to be sung. And I looked at it and it looked like meterless, non-rhyming poetry. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, okay, I'll figure, okay, I got to do something with this. That's a good way to describe it. I like that. (laughs) So when you have you have this play and you need to write music to it, I've, it's always fascinated me if you think of, say, a movie and, you know, James Horner, one of the many incredible people, just Wolfgang Peterson, just watch the movie and then what are they thinking of when they're trying to write music to it? And you actually did not have something to watch for. You just had the script, basically. Yes. So... Tell us about that process. I mean, what was going through your head while were you just reading the script and then trying to feel the emotion? What was going on there when you were writing the music to it? Yeah, you know, it started with a production meeting with Landon and her really sharing her visual ideas, like what the staging would look like and what the costuming would look like. Um And we both were like, yeah, this is really gothic. We're like getting dark vibes. Even from the, and in the script, it's really there too. Like Lorca doesn't hold back in, you know, even his original version. Scene one is, you know, the mother of the bridegroom saying, all the men in my life, except for you, dear son, have been murdered. That's my life. People just get murdered. And you also know the title of the play is Blood Wedding. So you know that there's going to be death and a wedding. And here's the mother talking to the bridegroom about all the men in her life being stabbed to death. So (laughs) it sets a tone. No, it sounds like a feel-good play of the year to me. So (laughs) It's just an extenuation of Halloween. That's what I keep telling people. Everybody who loves Halloween and is sad that it's over, they should come see this play. Right, exactly. Yeah, perfect. And uh, you guys just opened on the 8th. Correct. So you've had two performances and then you have tonight. Yes. And you told me tonight you probably have to head down there again (laughs) and just work with it. So um, this just got to be a lot of time that you're spending into this. Every, everybody. I, it's also college students who are the actors in the play and they're getting ready for finals week that's coming up. So they're memorizing their lines and they're going to rehearsal every single night. Some of those rehearsals last a really long time and, and they're trying to stay healthy so they can like finish off the semester getting good grades in their classes. So yeah, it's been a huge team effort. The stage manager is a student. Um, 
a lot of the folks who built the scenery, painted the set, helped with costumes are also students. So just a great team that you're working with. Yeah, it's it's wonderful because you see everybody who is present because they really care that art and live performance are happening here in Denver. Right. Oh, no, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, do you guys put on a lot of plays at uh, CCD? Typically, there's a play in the fall and then a full-fledged musical in the spring. Oh, excellent. Very nice. So, Are you going to be working on the musical? Yes. It's still yet to be determined. I mean, I think they are pretty sure what it is, but I think I'm not allowed to like announce it right. officially. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, this is really funny because this is also a very bloody themed thing, but last spring our musical was a sort of comedic musical adaptation of Evil Dead the movie. Oh my gosh. I love that movie. There was so much blood. There was blood all <laughs> over that stage. There was a mop crew. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. A mop crew. Oh, that's great. So that was really fun. And... That already has music written for it. It's a musical that's been around for a little while. But I was the sort of band director, music director. So I was there for rehearsals, helping actors learn their parts. And then when it came time for performance, I was on stage with a band, playing the music with the band, which was really fun. Excellent. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Well, let's... Uh... Put a, you, you brought a couple other snippets, I guess, of the music that you've done. What are we going for next here? Um, well, we can do another one with me singing. So you were asking me about kind of the process of writing the music. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure all kinds of folks who compose for stage and film have their own processes. Uh, what I was going for was trying to think of musical themes that could continue through things that could kind of reappear, but sometimes in different ways. And hopefully when folks see the play, they'll hear this, but sometimes things really disassemble musically. So sometimes themes get really distorted or garbled, and then sometimes they get clarified. Sometimes they're very exposed. Uh, so the other thing I brought is, uh, a piece called Red Fields, which the moon sings, and it brings in a theme that's from the wedding procession. So it's a wedding, of course. So there's a part where everybody processes for the wedding and the wedding procession is very gloomy. The idea is that I, in my mind, I was thinking, God, nobody wants this wedding to happen. Even the moon doesn't want it to happen. <laughs> you know, it's bad when the moon is like, no, 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 no. Y'all making happening. a mistake. Um, and so the wedding procession is supposed to feel like everybody dragging their feet to the church, like no one wants it to go down, but they're doing it anyways. And then later on, after stuff kind of falls apart, things um, get bloody, things, things get bloody. <laughs> then the moon comes back on and sings and the wedding procession is underneath there as kind of like a it's the opposite of foreshadowing. What is that post shadowing? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I like know. it. I'll take it. I'll accept it. <laughs> There's probably some term, some like literature uh, geek should call and tell us. Um, so we'll play a very, very short snippet of the procession and then we'll play Red Fields. And this is me singing um, just a very bare bones track. It's not fully mastered in a studio, but yeah. So do the wedding procession strip it first and then uh, Red Fields? And then we'll go into Red Fields and you know, hopefully folks will hear the procession in the Red Fields. You got it. No problem. This is Wedding Procession Snippet. You're listening to K4CO and we're joined by Molly Zachary who wrote all the original music for Lorca's Blood Wedding. <laughs> So that was a very quick intro to that. And I do apologize. Just a tiny little snip. Just a tiny little snippet of that. <laughs> gotcha. And then um, we are going to put on the other one that kind of pre, uh, post, pre, Is post. Post shadow. <laughs> po I mean, the word we made up tonight. <laughs> The word we made up tonight, and that one is called what again? Red Fields. Red Fields, all right. And it's the moon singing. 
So this is the moon singing. Yeah, but this one is you singing. Yes, for it. I'm I'm singing in this recording, but it is a moment where the actress who is playing the moon appears. Excellent, excellent. Here we go. Listening to Colorado's K4CO Radio. All right, that was actually uh, before that Redfield sample from Lorca's Blood Wedding, and then Molly wanted to play Sleater Kinney with "Turn It On" featuring Margot Price. Good that's song. the that's the first time I've actually heard that version. Like I know the "Turn It On" by Slater Kinney. Um, but yeah, that version with the banjo and Margot Price, that was really fun. Interesting, huh? Yeah. yeah that was cool. Nice. Um, little get back, back to Lorca's Blood Wedding. So you work very closely with Landon uh, on this, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, when you guys are going down there and getting ready for the show, what is, I mean, I know you're there. What is your role right there? Just making sure that everything goes smoothly and also... Um, who's playing all the music that uh, these people are singing to? For this production, the music is like, you know, I recorded it at home and I did mix and master it sort of for a stage setting. Mm-hmm. So it's not really, that was an interesting process too. So it's getting, every everything is getting played back from the sound booth at the theater. So they have all their sound cues. Yeah, so everything is kind of like, you can think of it like a backing track that gets cued when the moment happens. So there's some stuff that's explicitly sung to, as in when the moon comes out and sings, and then there's underscoring when certain things happen, like the wedding procession. Like the wedding procession. And isn't the majority of it a wedding? Or no? There's a lot of wedding. There's a, <laughs> there is a wedding procession, and then there's a wedding ceremony, and then there's a wedding reception, just like a real wedding. Except all of it is pretty tense. Pretty tense. <laughs> Hopefully not like a real wedding. <laughs> and I take it all the blood happens in one of those three or all of them? Or so I just, just don't want to spoil it Don't want to spoil it. You. Understandable. I, I want you to be surprised that. when the blood happens. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. I mean, the last uh, blood wedding I saw was actually, uh, what, Game of Thrones or something. That's when I, that's, that's that's when I stopped wedding. that show, actually. <laughs> um, not not. It was just because it took too long for the episodes to come out, and I just kind of put it on the shelf. Yeah. I forgot about it. But um, when it comes to the lyrics, because you wrote the lyrics in some of these stuff, and I didn't, I didn't write the lyrics. You didn't write them, okay? Yeah, the most of the lyrics are by the Irish playwright Marina Carr, who had done the adaptation. Gotcha. And then because the th- those lyrics were very. It's like free poetry. They're really, really, really open-ended. I did reconfigure a lot of stuff. So I guess I kind of edited. So, yeah, we'll back up. (laughs) The play is written by Frederico Garcia Lorca in the 1930s in Spain, in Spanish. And then adaptations have been happening basically since then. And then Marina Carr 
in Ireland did the adaptation in 2019 and added these poems. And then Landon said, I want them to be sung. And then I was like, well, in order for these free style poems to be sung, they need more structure. And then I made more edits and adaptations. Gotcha. Is that, a good ex- is yes. that like... That's the summary. <laughs> that that makes perfect sense right there. How we got from point A to point B. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what is your life going to be like after this play is done? Well, after next week. Well, I'm very excited. I'm going to see the play on Friday with my husband and some friends. And so I'm very excited to be an audience member. That's like... What a treat. <laughs> oh, I bet. To not be up there and actually sit back, relax, and just enjoy. Yeah. Not having the stress of what's going on and just kind of relax and watch. Yeah. 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 I don't know if filmmakers like to go see their own films or anything like that, but I'm very excited to go see the play and just immerse myself in the the bloodiness and the, the weddingness of right. it all. Um, and then after that, after the play closes, it's Thanksgiving break. Uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chill. I'm so excited. <laughs> just to relax and do nothing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, you've been working very hard for a while getting this thing on. So, um, we are going to play another song that you did choose. And this is an interesting one. Brings me back to my nineties punk days. Would you choose? Uh, well, I chose, <laughs> man, I chose a lot of old music, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you asked me some of my influences and, um, yeah, if uh, my brothers might be listening tonight, I told them to listen. And I remember very distinctly when my older brother got his driver's license, the first thing that happened was that my parents said, great, now you're going to pick up the other kids from school. So it was like he had an That's assignment. That's how it always happens. Exactly. He got a driver's license and then he had a chore. So he had to come pick me and my younger brother up from school. And he had the Nine Inch Nails Pretty Hate Machine and he would just blast it. And part of me thought that like... It was so cool that my cool older brother was like blasting this industrial music as he like peeled out of the parking lot of the school. Um, So Trent Reznor is amazing. He got to start really with these albums back in the 90s, but he does a lot of film scoring. And I did listen to some of Trent Reznor's film scoring as I was like trying to get vibes and think about electronic music and industrial types of sounds that might be well suited for this he play. he did it perfectly i mean uh transitioning over to film and scores he is really good at that fantastic Definitely. i love i love listening to all his newer stuff but we chose one of his old hits we did we did and before that we are gonna play one more snip from you that is entitled Fight Scene. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you can't have blood without struggle. So there's that. But again, I'm not going to reveal who is fighting or when in the play they're fighting or who wins. I will reveal none of that. Um, but I do feel like this song, I was like very much trying to channel some Trent Reznor. So that's why uh, we've chosen this clip. And this is the last clip from the play that will air tonight Mm -hmm. and this one's just instrumental so you can envision some uh 1930s era spanish uh folks struggling gotcha (laughs) fair all right i like it i like it they're fighting they're fighting everybody's kung fu fighting yes (laughs) um did you want to break after this fight scene to kind of close this up or do you want us to close this up right now let people know where they can get these tickets uh it is going on at the king center down on auraria campus great venue uh i i think so and tickets are how much tickets are 18 dollars for ccd students and staff members and then 21 dollars for the general public uh which is a good deal for all of the elements that have gone into this, like how much collaboration and everything. Like it's really $21 that is well spent and it goes into the department so that we can keep doing more plays and more productions. Awesome. So it helps support everything that we're trying to do over there and our students and their dreams and goals of, you know, being part of the art scene in Denver for many, many years to come. Well, the way that I keep finding the website is I just Google CCD blood wedding (laughs) 
<laughs> but I do have a website if anybody is inclined to grab a pen and paper. So you can Google CCD, Community College of Denver, and Blood Wedding, or you can go to A H E C A HEC. That stands for Auraria Higher Education Campus. So AHEC dot university tickets dot com. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Molly, it's been such a pleasure having you into the studio to tell us about Lorca's blood wedding and all the work that has gone into it. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Definitely. And hopefully uh, after this week, you have a really great Thanksgiving that's relaxing uh, since you're running all over the place right now. But ladies and gentlemen, Molly Zachary wrote the uh, original music for Lorca's Blood Wedding. Definitely check it out again at the King Center down at Auraria Campus. They are going on November 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th. And then there's a nice break there. Molly, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. All right, here we got some fight scene music, and then we are going to end it with a song you chose from Nine Inch Nails' Pretty Hate Machine. Yep. All right. Take care. You've been listening to K4CO Radio Interviews, and here is Fight Scene by Molly Zachary. (laughs) 